Hello everybody, welcome back to Spitalfields in London, one of my most favourite parts of town. Um, I'm on Princelet Street again at a fabulous Grade 2 listed Huguenot house that I'll be listing for sale soon with a guide price of £5 million. Hopefully some of you may recall that I recently sold a beautifully curated house here and hot off the heels of completion on that property, we were contacted by a certain Mr. Chris Dyson who has now appointed me to sell his property on the same street. Now, if you're familiar with the architectural world, the name Chris Dyson will be instantly recognisable. He is by far one of the most influential architects in this part of East London and beyond, and he's been hugely influential in the redevelopment and sympathetic refurbishment of many of these gorgeous historic homes. Chris, or as I like to refer to him, Mr Spitalfields, uh, is someone I personally hold in very high regard. So when we got the call and we were appointed, I can honestly say it was a career highlight for me. It's a huge honour to be um, looking after his home and be able to give you a, a warts and all tour, which I'll kick off with in a minute. So. What we're going to explore are five floors, including a basement, which have been extensively refurbished since Chris and his wife acquired the house in 2006. This, there's nearly 5,000 square feet in total, and this is where things get very interesting. It's an unmistakably unique home, but there is a twist. As well as the main house, there's a converted workshop at the rear, which was also redeveloped by Chris as part of, of, of an ambitious basement conversion a few years ago. It's a two-storey building in its own right, with loads of square footage here, really bright and topped off with a big glass atrium. This space was originally where Chris's architectural practice was, but his, as his company expanded, resulting in them moving to larger premises around the corner, this area then became uh, surplus requirements and rented out now commercially for a very healthy figure. So the decision any would-be buyer is, is to have whether you carry on keeping and letting it out or keep it for their own use. It's up to you. If you have any thoughts on this, I'd love to hear them once we've seen the, the video. Let me know how you'd uh, use the space. Leave the comments below. Overall though, it's a very easy home to own. Chris and his family have had good, a good year's worth of sympathetic redevelopment carried out before they even moved in. But the end result is a beautiful character home with all the benefits that more modern homes offer, just in terms of electrics, heating, plumbing, insulation, that sort of thing. Uh, the townhouse configuration also means that you can apportion certain rooms as bedrooms or reception rooms. Uh, in the case of Chris, he's used one as a home office and another one as a dressing room. There's also a basement, uh, basement area that serves as a really well um, finished private self-contained apartment. So with that all out of the way, let's crack on with the tour. Right, welcome to Princelet Street and the very village-like quality it's so quiet. This never fails to amaze me how quiet this little village setup is really. It feels like a village. It's lovely. And here is the house in question. That end of Princelet Street is Brick Lane, just by where that van is popping out now. And then just to my left, further up, that is Princelet Street and the junction with Wilk Street. And this is the house in question, number 11 Princelet Street. Georgian, built in 1720. It was actually built as a clergyman's house, so it didn't actually come with a weaver's loft, which you can see at the top of some of the other houses there. So Chris had, it, had one added, went back to, for, for planning when he bought the property, and added a weaver's, uh, well, top floor basically, to, to sort of match in with the other weaver's lofts in the other houses. Now, originally, well, uh, over its history, it's been a, a workshop and a shop and the, the, you've got these two entrance doors for a reason. The one on the right is the front door for the, for the house. The one on the left is the door for the studio, which is part and parcel of this property, but it's the section that Chris uh, rents out separately at the back. I uh, showed some of the video footage in my intro of the, uh, the studio, which is currently rented. So that's got completely separate entrance. It was designed that way. It's also got an awning. You can't really see, but you can see the chain over there, but it's got an awning which pulls down to block out some of the sun. But yeah, built in 1720, and uh, when Chris bought the property, it was basically derelict. Didn't have the triple window frontage that it has now. That was all put back in to, in keeping with the rest of the house. So let's head across, and I'm going to pick the front door out to have a wander into. Big front door, solid wood front door, made, uh, c commissioned actually by a chap who I think is still in the Truman Brewery. And this has got, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a really rather lovely grained paint effect on it so it looks the part and here we are right door's going to slam so just wait for that that's a big door right inside the hallway welcome to the entrance so 
These doors here and this door here, these are two doors that would effectively go into that ground floor studio. If you wanted to buy this and just put it all back into one, it would be very, very straightforward. And that, that half glazed door there is another door that leads you through to the studio. We'll see more of that uh, from the rear view, uh, sorry, the rear windows as we push our way up through the house. But that's another entrance there. But it's completely uh, self-contained, if you like. Um, so no, if you do want to keep that as a rental investment, then no problem with that. And they've got their own access without disturbing you. Basement and a basement studio flat. This was all done as part and parcel of the big refurbishment that Chris put in. They bought this in 2006. I think they've been trying to buy it for 10 years and it was a complete and utter wreck when they first acquired it. It had been squatted in and all of the original character had been removed, which we'll, I'll go into a bit more detail as we head back upstairs. But big, I've sold smaller flats than this, but this is a big studio flat, wardrobe, bedroom area here, dining area, kitchenette at the back, through that door there, there's just a little loo and wet area, shower wet area, tongue and groove covered walls. And just at the front here, nice little touch, that mirrored back through that, sec uh, through that set of doors is very handy when it comes to just using the natural light coming through the pavement grills up there, bounces through, keeps it nice and bright, nice touch. A nice wooden floor on this level as well. I'm not entirely sure what this. It looks a bit beachy, but uh, it's solid wood, but I might be wrong, so don't quote me on that. Right, let's go upstairs. More tongue and groove. It does feel very authentic. And that's the point. So to put you in the picture, when, as I said, the house was acquired, there was no original features left. They'd all been ripped out. The only original portion of the house is this staircase that runs up to the top floor and it's got this really nice lead tread. I've never seen it before. It works really well. I mean, it's certain the colour and everything works with the, the swatches that the colour swatches that were used to um, paint the internal panelling with. All this panelling has been added but it's been done in a very distressed authentic style it looks it really does look the part you really would be forgiven for thinking you're in an or in an original house but also bear in mind because this was done from scratch you do get the benefit of all of the electrics and insulation and plumbing that you would get from a, a newer home right reception room great room fabulous ceiling height love that fireplace wood burner nicely tucked away in there doing it's looking it's best to be nice and cozy all the coving paneling is all has all been added but very much researched and gone into real detail to make sure it's all very authentic three sash windows these were newly added i love those weight radiators as well they're real solid radiators but they kick out some heat even the floorboards, they were sourced specifically and made to look original and they're lovely, even down to the authentic squeak as we're walking around. Now this room is, could be a bedroom. It's currently used as a study for Chris, for a home office for him. And great room, again, this lovely color match continues everywhere now that's a big window and you can see through there that's the top of the two floor studio at the back the converted studio which is all, all, all part and parcel of this purchase potentially because it gets you that lovely big atrium on the top got a lot of time for a decent uh, bookshelf and then more leaded stairs up to another half landing and you get a really good vantage point from up here at the top of that studio. So this floor, this is the first, second floor now, and straight into a bathroom. You've got matched up wall and floor marbling. 
very stylish suite. That's a nice bath. Deep, big bath actually. Double width shower, double width hand wash hand basin. And then a bedroom. Nice size room. More sash windows. Even the radiators are colour matched and look the part. Another fireplace in here as well. And on this floor, another room which would, to all intents and purposes, be a bedroom, but now being used as a very nice, very stylish, very practical, big walk-in dressing room. And I love the dark colours. I love old houses. You can just get away with darker colours. They just look so dramatic. They add such a sense of occasion to these rooms. I know it's nice to have sort of modern white rooms, but I don't know, there's, there's something nice, really nice about a darker coloured room. Now, the Weaver's Loft that was added, which Chris successfully gained permission on, is above us. So this staircase is not original, clearly. It's a nice wooden addition to complement the rest of the house. I think it's done a very nice job. This semicircle half landing up here. And just to my left, as we reach the top, a guest loo. And somewhere to hide your cleaning stuff, but uh, it's handy to have when you're on the top floor, which is the kitchen. Kitchen diner, lovely space, bright, airy, good ceiling height. Um, given the fact that you've got darker coloured cupboards and kitchen work surface area, it's, it still feels incredibly bright up here. It's a real sun trap. That way is south facing, as you can see from this uh, set of windows, which neatly, I won't do them all, but neatly all open up. So if you really want, when it, gets, when it does get hot up here, you just pop these open, you get a nice airflow coming through. You can access that terrace from the left and right of the windows. That's the door there and another door there, but both open out onto that terrace. And I know this is, uh, I think Chris's wife's favourite room just because it's so bright, she tends to work up here. And you've got this additional private terrace on the back. Got rubberized flooring here, quite a nice industrial look. And here we go. This is a northwest facing balcony, very quiet. You just see the top of Principal Tower over there, just at the top of Bishop's Gate. But a decent size, great for hosting. Nicely screened, nice lavender and olive plants dotted around. Just see over the top of there, that's the Truman Brewery chimney. Give you a sense of where you are if you know this area. And these doors are bifold. So again, if you're social, uh, social events, middle of summer, these open up completely and you've just got a big entertaining space. And there's also power and water up here as well. So it's a very, as, as well as being a nicely historic restored home. It's a very, very practical space as well. And a very usable home. Lots of rooms, but all used and all very usable. I hope you agree. There we go. Right then, um, that's the house done. The studio and the house tour taken care of. I hope you've enjoyed that, but I can't leave without discussing the area, which for me is just as important as this house. Brick Lane, it's just up there. Um, you've got Sunday markets, you've got the Truman Brewery, you've got clubs, restaurants, coffee shops, uh, bars, and you've got some amazing street food on hand up there as well. And thankfully, there is still a healthy number of curry houses left up on Brick Lane. Um, I have to say though, one of my favorite things to do is just wander around the back streets of Spitalfields, just enjoying the history of the place. It's everywhere uh, and it's all in such great condition. If you get the chance, you must do it. Just have a wander and particularly go to Artillery Passage. It's just up there. It's a wonderful pedestrianised street that reminds me of the shambles in York. Um, it's still hard to comprehend actually that these places that I'm standing in were slums really in the grand scheme of things up until recently. 
And whilst we're on the subject of history, I've got something for you. I've just finished reading a book called London by Peter Ackroyd, and it's excellent. Now, it took me a year to read. Um, I'm dyslexic. It's a very wordy book, um, so I had to reread it a couple of times for it all to go in, but it's a really fabulous read, and I'd recommend it. And I'm just about to, sorry. Um, a friend of mine knows my obsession with uh, history of, of London, so I'm just about to embark on this book, the City of London by David Canaston. But my question is, um, I would love it if anybody could recommend to me some really good historic books about London, in particular the period from the medieval uh, era, so 14, mid-1400s, 1450 or so, uh, right the way through to the Georgian period. But I'm particularly interested in history of London in those periods. So any recommendations, please leave them below in the comments. They would be very gratefully received. Sorry, I've gone off piste a bit. Right, that's, uh, sorry, I'm back in the zone now. Um, right, where are we? Uh, right, things to do. What else? Things to do, yes. Uh, right, we are in a very, very cool part of town, as I've explained. Within minutes on foot, you've got Shoreditch High Street, you've got Hoxton, you've got Columbia Road Flower Market, you've got Broadway Market, Spitalfields Market, the City of London to explore, Clerkenwell and Farringdon. There's also an enormous number of very cool galleries around here. Um, you've got the obvious ones like uh, White Cube or Hoxton Square, but you've also got the really cool independent ones like Nelly Duff over on Columbia Road. They're always worth a look. And I think it's fair to say now that the eastern quarter of London is the spiritual home of the creative scene these days. Um, transport rides, where do I start? Liverpool Street, Old Street, Bank, Shoreditch High Street, Aldgate stations. Between all of these, you've got a combination of national rail services, you've got the Circle, Hammersmith, Metropolitan Tube Lines, the DLR, London Overground and the Elizabeth Line. So I think I've covered everything. Um, it's a lot to take in in, uh, in, in, in one video, but uh, this is such a special place and I really hope you get out and if you do anything, come out and just enjoy this area. It's such a nice place to be and I'd highly recommend it. You can get in touch in the normal way if you are interested in talking to me a bit more about this property, simon.stone at uniquepropertycompany.co.uk or you can go via the website uniquepropertycompany.co.uk. Thank you ever so much for watching. I thank you again for your time and I do appreciate all the comments that I get. So I will look forward to seeing you on the next tour, but until then, take care.